Hey guys, Matt here at Rec Brewery. Happy Hoomver Wednesday. A little bit of a scenery change here. Actually picked up this table finally uh, came in uh, today. So it's, it's, it's like half the size of my brew station and it just gives me a, a better place to work, uh, really. So let's go ahead and crack something open. This is a collaboration, Mexican lager from uh, Tap Out Brewing, main brew guy, Gary. Um, he collaborated with Josh Hoover at Pureview Brewing Company. And he made this and it says, this collaboration between BrewTubers Josh Hoover and Gary Fortin was collaborated from brains to glass as a first run recipe with corn and pilsner being the bulk of the grist. Mexican lager yeast from White Labs was used to complete the recipe and enjoy responsibly. He says the APV is 4.9% and the IBUs are 23.9. It was canned on March the 10th. And I got a new, some new glassware here. Um, I haven't got a chance to really show this off yet. This is the uh, Brian's Short Circuited Brewers glass that I got from him. Really cool stuff. Should probably fit in here. I don't remember what size glasses these are. I think they're 16s. Yep, leave it right about there. Nice, gorgeous beer as always, Gary. Very clear. Lots of good carbonation in there. And uh, on the bottom of his glass, I don't know. You can't really see it too well here, but it's got a neat little sort of effect in the middle. Uh, there's like a hop that's imprinted on the bottom of the glass. I'm not going to be able to show that without dumping the beer, but I'm going to get this closer to you guys so you can see both the beer and this fine glass. I'm sure it's circuited. You can see that real clear. Excellent. All right. I could use a nice refreshing cold one, so I thought this would be perfect for that. Yeah, it's got a real nice crisp, uh, clean aroma to it. I don't know what hops he used, but um, very inviting. So let's check this out. Cheers. Oh yeah. Yeah, just what I needed today. Did some work out here in the garage, cleaning up some stuff. That's actually why the camera is where it is now, because I was able to move things around. I still got some organizing to do back there to, uh, to um, get back some more of that garage. Again, it just gets, it gets crazy over the winter. Everything just sort of gets dumped around in here and I'm trying to reclaim my uh, brewing corner, so. Yeah, it's real nice. It's got like a, it's got a little bit of a, um, a little bit of a, a bitterness sort of bite to it at the beginning. Um, real nice. But yeah, very cool. Good job, Gary. I love that. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. I got a couple more from Gary. I still got to check out, but um, I wanted to get into this. So um, one of the reasons that I picked up this table is because uh, I really don't have any room on this bench. And I really do like the stainless steel. I mean, they are, you know, they do cost a little bit extra money. Um, this one actually came in. It was, it's a little bit dented on the side. It's it's real minor, so I'm not going to complain. And these, these boxes are very heavy and... Uh, this one actually has a little bit of a, of a bump in the back too, but it's, it doesn't, it doesn't, um, mess up the, um, you know, sort of the structuralness of it and, and, you know, stability of the weight on top. So I'm not too worried about it. If it was really banged up, I might call and complain, but I, these things, the boxes are heavy, so they get banged around, but I thought I would use this as sort of a canning station. Um, I'll slip this up. I don't know. Probably going to leave this up here. Most of the time, this is pretty heavy. The, uh, the October Seamer, yeah, I think it's 35, 40 pounds. So I thought maybe, you know, maybe I'll have this, you know, I'll have that sitting on one side where I can can and I can put my, uh, you know, line up all my cans over here and, and work. On brew day, uh, I can line, line up all my hops here, um, you know, pH meter and everything else that I'm working on. I used to have, I have a, a folding table that, that I always use it's um, it's lower than this, so this is cool because this is basically counter height. Um, so it gives me somewhere to, to to work without really having to feel sort of cramped. Or, or uh, actually, with the other table, I would I usually had that chair and I would sit in front of it. I could sit in front of this, um, 
It is a little taller and that's actually a uh, counter height chair. It's one of the old ones that we had out of the kitchen. We just replaced our chairs. So this is cool. Um, you know, I'll probably, uh, probably, you know, can out here. It's a shame because the, this actually, my wife approved to have, for me to have this right next to the kegerator in the kitchen. There's a spot on the counter that we don't use all that often. Um, and there's plenty of room to put that and I would just leave it there. Problem is the cabinets, they come out to like right here. I mean, it's like, there's like an inch, half inch maybe difference between this and the, the bottom of the cabinet. It's a shame because this won't fit underneath of there, you know? And uh, I guess, I guess if I really wanted to, I could, I could raise all the, the cabinets up, but I'm not gonna do that just for this device. <laughs> A little bit silly um the other thing i, I did i worked on um recently i did this last week um the 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 tubes are getting a little dingy um i'd be curious to, to know what you guys do with this um i've had these i guess every couple of years i, I replaced the high high uh, temp silicon tubing they just get they little i mean i clean them really good after every brew day make sure that I run through some sort of uh, cleaner or star sand or something to get them real nice and clean each each day. So they never sit with any gunk in them for any any long period of time. Um, and the water ones are fine, so I'm, I'm just going to use them for something else. But I replaced all of them. I figured it was a great time to do it. It's been a couple of couple of years since I've done that. And I take really good care of them. So I'm sure I probably would have been fine using them from, from here out. They just got discolored over time. Um, I don't think that that really affects anything. But um, it was it was just bothering me to look at it, and it, it didn't look clean anymore. So I'd be interested to hear what you guys do if you if you guys change out your hoses every so often, and how often that might be, and if you do that with any other equipment. Um, you know, if, if, of course, all my other stuff here, my kettles, they should last a lifetime, so I shouldn't have to worry about that. Um, all my fermenters are stainless steel now, so you know a lot of the stuff should really last a lifetime, but. Um, Things like buckets, I would I would stop using after so many so many years or you know so many uses because um, they either get really scratched up and, and could uh, harvest uh, bacteria possibly if you were fermenting in them. Um, but I don't really I don't really use them for that anymore. Um, I just use them for like cleaning and, and on brew day really. Um, I do make soda occasionally for the kids, so I, I'll use one of those five gallon buckets to mix up a batch of soda. But that's about it. I don't store anything in them anymore. Um, I did actually replace my hop spider too. I replaced, or I, I cleaned it out. I think I showed you guys this last week. Cleaned it out real nice with the PBW. But the problem I've been having with this, I'll probably still use it for, for something. I, I'll, I'll figure it out. Or maybe I'll repurpose it to someone, uh, someone else in the area that's homebrewing or going to homebrew. But anyway, I do like this. This is actually from Mangrove Jack, this one. The guys that make some cool, you know, they make yeast and some other things. The problem I have with this one is when it sits in the kettle, it doesn't reach, it really doesn't reach, you know, that far down. And uh, when I'm doing a five gallon batch, this barely touches the wort. The, the five gallon mark comes just over that. So if I'm using any more than an ounce or so of hops, they're not really going to mix well in this. And that's, that's kind of why I wanted to get away from that because this one, you know, hopefully this isn't the, isn't the camera shot. Um, but as you can see, this one goes down another inch, uh, or I think two, an inch or two, I think is the measurements of this one. I believe this is an eight inch one and this is 10. Um, so it goes, it goes lower. It doesn't touch the, uh, element. So <laughs> the idea there is I should be able to use this now and not have to worry about, um, you know, not reaching the wart, the bottom of the wart. Uh, with this one, I, what I was doing is I was just sitting it at the bottom of the kettle just to make sure it was all submerged, but. This will be a, a much cleaner thing to do, I think. So I went ahead and did that. But um, yeah, that's that's really all I have for you guys this week. Not a, not a whole lot. Hopefully a short one. And uh, oh, the um, the BrewTubers yeast experiment, the DKN, is due to the hubs next week. So I'll be canning and shipping that out early next week. And uh, the Saison, um, I actually planned on brewing it today, but it just it wasn't in the cards. So I'm hoping to brew that here in the next couple of days because that's due at the end of... Uh, May, beginning of June. So I want to make sure it has a little bit extra time just to kind of age. It's, it's good for a Saison to do that. So anyway, guys, I hope everyone has had a hell of a week. Uh, have, happy Humber Wednesday, everybody. Have a good night. Take care. Cheers. Gary, this is a crusher, man. This is awesome.
delicious. Nice job, Josh and Gary. Excellent.